About two years ago, my wife Sadie and I were preparing for our wedding, and at the time I was living in my van down by the river. Well, actually, most of the time I was in town because I was working on video projects and different things, but that's okay. And at the time, we were really wanting to find a house that we could buy as not only an investment, but also something that needed a lot of work in order to get some reps through the process and hopefully learn enough to where no future home issues or real estate considerations were a barrier that were too big for us and so we were looking all over the place but the market was super hot and it was hard to find something but fortunately after months of trying and after our wedding I had knocked on enough doors and I'd finally found a house that we were able to buy and it needed a lot of work but it was also very small and so I dove in and over the course of the fall if you saw the last video you you saw that we dove into the exterior I had to do a bunch of landscape tear out and re grading to help with some water management and then I dove into the front of the house which had some rot issues that we knew about and some other things like layout and a window that was at my chin height and so I tore that all apart reframed the entire front of the house did some work on the foundation put some new windows in and then rebuilt what was a sunroom into a mudroom which is now the front door and then after that dove into the roofing because that was also pretty old and the winter was coming and so we didn't want the uh, roof to have any issues so my buddy stopped by who knew what he was doing and we put a whole new roof on the place over the course of a few days and then that was was just about when winter came and since then I have been tinkering away at the inside still neglecting the landscape but have been working on the bathroom living room and kitchen which were very outdated a mess and had some problems that need to be dealt with and so while I'm not that experienced it uh, it all came together and well this is the process that we've been going through for the last year and a half until we moved in here about three weeks ago so after I finished those shutters up, I got the bathroom completely torn apart. There was some rot under the floor and so to access that I had to tear everything out, which was okay because I didn't really like the style of the bathroom anyways. And so I completely tore out the floor and this was the thing that I was honestly the most intimidated by since the beginning. And I had talked to some experienced carpenters and they just said, oh, just, you know, go down there and replace the wood that's bad and lift the things that need to be lifted. And while it sounded simple to them it was not so simple in my head and honestly by the end it really was simple and exactly what they said just common sense but it's a lot of work and it was intimidating but um, I got it done replaced some joists replaced a sill plate lifted the wall basically stopped everything from getting any worse in the future and while it was open I had some plumbers come in update some pieces that I didn't want to deal with in the future and then I moved back to the electrical problems that I was dealing with which I know very little about so this was one of many situations where I had to phone a friend it kind of looks like it's almost just an extension off of a pre-existing knob and tube circuit. Oh, it is. I think so. I don't know. So as you can tell, starting this project, I knew very little about electrical, but I was able to get some coaching and over the course of a few days with some help. We replaced some outlets and some lights and got everything dialed in so that it's safe for us down the road. Then I bounced back over to the bathroom and started reframing the walls to get some nice square corners to work off of with the new shower system. And in order to install a shower, I needed to re-level the surface. So I got some self-leveling compound and used some forms to pour up a new flat level surface. And then I got a fiber glass shower kit to install just because a one piece would have been impossible to get in through the doorways even though it probably would have been easier to install from there I moved back over to the kitchen which was the room I was most excited about getting some progress on so I started by tearing out all the old cabinets that were pretty beat up and removed some of the ceiling lights because the ceiling is so low I need to replace them with something more low profile and then on top of that the flooring was quite strange when we bought it and so I had to pull all of that out and once it was out out, I brought in some cabinets that I bought used off of Facebook and started to try to get a layout in mind that would work with the cabinets and the appliances that I was going to be working with. And then after I figured that out, I went and bought some flooring, went with vinyl just because the undulation of the floor was a bit problematic. And so I figured the easiest thing to manage that would just be sheet vinyl. And so far, I've actually been pretty happy with it. So we got it all glued down and trimmed up the edges to be ready for trim and then trimmed out the door and I had already done the windows. And so got all the baseboard. Then I forgot to 
video the rest of the wall over there. Got the board and bat look, did some paint for the um, chalkboard, and then just touched up all of the window sills. And then Sadie had ordered some wallpaper that she wanted to use over on um, this wall. And so I got that and it was actually very easy to install once I got the alignment right, both with the graphics and um, with the wall. And so it was just a matter of adding some, spraying some water on the back and then sticking it on, trying not to let it bubble, which took some time, but turned out pretty good. And I actually really liked the design. So I guess wallpaper is making a comeback. Then over here on this wall, I wanted to do a shiplap look, but shiplap I thought was fairly expensive, and so I wanted to do a DIY version. So I bought some quarter inch plywood and ripped it into, I believe it was four inch strips, and I tacked it all up onto the wall, which was okay, but the problem was I didn't keep track of the exact alignment of these cuts, and so if you aren't matching you know, each cut to the board that was naturally next to it, there tends to be a slight variance in your cuts, which makes it not look perfect. And so um, I'm not sure I'll do this again because it turns out shiplap's not that expensive anyways but once it was painted it looked pretty good and overall it accomplished the look that I was going for and so we've got this nice vertical backing and then I installed the cabinets again and again this laser level that I got was a lifesaver in a lot of different settings just because this house is so out of square because of its age and you know the settling over the years I was able to use that laser to reference everything off of as I installed it so once I got the cabinets installed I went and got a hood and hung that up onto the uh, upper cabinets that I got and then cleaned things up put a little baseboard um, liner around to help manage the water I'm um, not sure if I did it right there but hey it's in and got a used range as well as a used dishwasher as a set they look pretty good and were a lot cheaper than new so got those and turns out they both work well so it was a win and after that i built some shelving for the open shelves up higher to store all of our cups and plates and things like that while keeping a little bit more of an open feel in the kitchen and I was thinking about doing a floating style without any brackets, but I ended up opting for bracket style, which I actually really like the look of. And the black, I feel like, kind of ties together with some of the other black features in the um, house that you'll see later. So this is the end, and the kitchen was pretty much complete, which it was so nice to have a section of the house that was finally feeling, well, I guess just usable. So then after that, I wanted to get some protection on the south or sorry, the west windows from the sun because in the afternoons in the summer it gets really hot with the sun beating through those windows. And so I bought some cedar and just some rough lumber to build some shades for those and I got those, just cut them up. It, they weren't going to be fancy. I just needed something to provide shade and so I stained everything and then brought them outside to hang them over the windows and once I had hit my marked locations I just screwed them in, got it all caulked, sealed up so no issues will show up in the future and just like that I had some reprieve from the sun. But not from the rain that had been falling off of the roof and splashing mud all over the siding so I bought some gutter material and cut down some gutters and hung them up. I still haven't figured out a drainage system but at least the water's not falling off in the same way. And then back into the inside, the walls were still quite a mess. I had a lot of open, you know, holes in the walls as well as just some completely uncovered walls. And so my buddy Waylon fortunately had a gap in work and he is a very skilled carpenter. So he came by for a handful of days to give me a hand and we decided to go with a shiplap for the bathroom and the front walls in the mudroom. And for everything but the bathroom, we used MDF. And then in the bathroom, we used a actual wood shiplap. And that was just so that if there was any moisture issues in the future from the shower, it wouldn't cause any warping or swelling of the MDF. And so, with some furring strips on this front wall, we got the shiplap up and I really liked the look of it. So, this was definitely a good call. And I think it was actually Waylon's idea. So. He's got to take credit there. But I knew that there were still some problems with the other walls. And while Waylon was trimming out all of the windows, since that is an absolute art form and one that he is very good at, I was happy to hand it off and figure out a way to get the rest of the walls fixed. And people had told me that if you don't know drywall, you shouldn't try it. So I called the drywaller to come in and skim coat the walls and ceilings that were not yet done. 
Here's the finished product. You can see the new texture on the walls and the ceiling there, and it was pretty much ready for paint. And so Waylon finished up trimming out a few more windows, got the baseboard ready, and attached all of that on. And then it was time for the fun part, which was painting. And neither of us had ever done it before. Well, with a sprayer at least. Finally, putting paint on. Not a lot left. Okay. Now you aren't seeing Sadie much in these videos, but that's not because she wasn't helping. She was super busy last year working on her day job as well as building her wedding photography business so that financially we could afford to do this whole project. And I'll tell you right now that this would not have been possible without her support in the background. After I finished up all the painting, I got onto all of the finishing touches. So I had ordered up some blinds online, and it was actually really easy to order them, just giving them all the measurements, and then um, to install them was incredibly easy too. They're not the most high class things, but they worked out fine, and you can pull them up or down, and there's no strings, so I figured they work fine for this job. And then I went around and just put all the electrical outlet covers back on, tried to get things looking fairly clean again. And for the bedroom and bathroom doors, which I did not have yet, I wanted to go with barn doors. And so the bedroom, I was able to find one, recondition it and use that. But for the bathroom, I had to make one. And so this is just using MDF. I built a frame surrounding some uh, quarter inch plywood and then bought some cedar to just cover that all up, which I really like how it turned out. And then for the rest of it, I had to get a new sink, which fortunately I was able to get one from the neighbor, um, Jesse. He gave me their old one there, which was awesome. And he also taught me how to install that as well as the new toilet, which, um, yeah, again, another lifesaver. So after all those things were installed, we got light fixtures in, a new refrigerator, and then cleaned some things up and hauled the old one out, got the new refrigerator placed, and then I had to switch the doors around because they were opening the wrong direction and the factory holes were drilled inaccurately on the other side, so I had to redrill them, which was fun, but now it's working okay. So got that done and then we swept things up and started hauling in our furniture boxes, which you guessed it, they are Ikea because this house is tiny and they work perfect. All right, so here we are today. If you watched the last video, you know I left off with those shutters. I ended up making matching pairs both sides of the house, and I've liked them so far. Um, otherwise, the outside looks fairly similar. A few more weeds in the yard, and so the weather is just getting nice right now, and I'm gonna be landscaping it here pretty soon. I have to make some decisions, but uh, for today, I'm gonna show you guys what uh, the inside looks like now that we put all the work into there, and we've moved in, gotten settled in. All right, so moving in the front door, this might be one of my favorite rooms so far, and it's the mudroom. Um, prior, this was a sunroom, as you guys saw. I enclosed it, moved the front door from right here to right there, got rid of the storm door that was there. So now this is kind of the entryway. I've got this big live edge slab, and that took quite a bit of work to get all leveled off. When I got it, it was twisted and warped, um, but I got it all leveled off, planed it down. Took a while, but uh, I like the look of it now. Then we threw some shoe baskets underneath, so that's where we're storing most of our shoes, and then we have overflow kind of out in the shed. And then my favorite thing, which is the sign that was up here on the gable when I first started. It was the very first thing I took down, and pretty much the last thing I put up um, prior to moving back in. And so this thing will live on. I don't know how old it is. Obviously, that's not original, but it's got some history. So I love to bring it back in, and uh, yeah, this is the mudroom. It's awesome. Added an extra, I think, 60 square feet of usable space, whereas before it was just kind of fairly unusable. Moving into the living space, this area turned out really good. It still has the same floor that was in here when I started. I scuffed it up, beat it up a little bit, had to make some repairs, but this room has the same flooring other than in the entryway. And we got a couch from Ikea. This thing turns into a bed. The bottom pulls out, and so um, it's nice and compact. It sits in this corner nicely. And then if we do have a guest that is down with staying in our little one bedroom studio style cottage, then here's a bed. And then we've got the TV on the wall. And I made a frame for that. That turned out really awesome. It's made out of um, cedar and I built it to help house basically all the wires and the mount system. And so it's on an arm that can come out away from the wall and 
be pointed either towards the kitchen or towards the, the desk, anywhere I want to. Um, but then when we're not using that, it just kind of sits right back nicely into there. Um, it's framed up pretty clean. You can't see any of the wires or the hardware. And then there's a little box on the bottom that also houses the speaker. And so it's just a really clean setup. And then I'd made two live edge bookshelves um, that are floating shelves also. And they're, they're over here on the corner. And those are just to house a handful of the books that we have. I'm still trying to figure out a solution for um, yeah, more book storage capacity, but that turned out really good. And then we put a dresser down here and this is a closed storage dresser. So it's basically half of our clothes are out here. We each have three drawers to our name and they fill up pretty quickly, but uh, it's working out well. And then on top, we just have decorations some photos from times past, the little wedding ring box that I made Sadie for uh, when I proposed to her and then a couple artifacts this chunk of an elk antler um, or sorry a moose antler was from a fire i was on in alaska years ago i had to cut it down small so i could fit a little chunk of it into my pack carry it around for a couple weeks before i was able to bring it back and then there's a bunch of little cookies from little trees that i cut out just for memory's sake and then a bowl that i made for sadie and that's kind of our cool our key and um, ring dish that we throw our stuff in at the end of the day as well as a few of my favorite books so We've got all that and then one of my favorite features in this whole house is the coffee table. So this coffee table is a slab of black walnut. Now this slab was harvested like maybe 45, 50 years ago. I don't know the exact date, but my wife's mom, when she moved here to Idaho from Kansas, she brought this with her and it was milled on the farm, her parents' farm and her brother made it into a coffee table. And then it was used in Sadie's house growing up for many years and it was beat up and they had then retired it, put it into their attic. And Sadie asked if we could have it to clean it up and reuse it. And so I got it, I kind of had to resurface it. There was a lot of paint and it had warped over the years and, and the finish was gone. And so I put a bunch of work into re-cleaning up the top side, making it all look nice, smooth, um, sanding everything down, refinishing it. And then Sadie bought some new legs that she really liked and I put them on the bottom side and so now we've got this coffee table that lived in Sadie's house when she was a young kid um, came over from Kansas from you know generations ago in her family and we get to enjoy it for ourselves so really cool little piece and then other than that I just got a uh, cool IKEA chair that's actually very comfortable and then a little side table and this wall over here that's fairly big and empty right now I, I'm gonna do something here but I haven't built anything yet and so we'll see what that ends up being whether it's photos or plants or shelving I'm not sure then over here is the desk now this desk I pulled the legs off of my old desk that I had um, previously and I, I took the legs and then I bought a big live edge slab and it's blue pine i believe and it's a bit rough and so again this took a, a bit of work i got it all cleaned up sanded up um, oiled it and then now it makes an awesome little desk it has like this alcove and so my arm can kind of rest while i either sit or stand in there and it can be adjusted up or down using the buttons over here and so it usually just lives in the down down position when we're not using it and then if I am using it for a long day of editing video or whatever it might be, then I can raise it up and that way I can stand beyond my feet. And it's worked out great. It is a little bit hard. We're trying to figure out how we're gonna store all our stuff. Um, we got files and you know random things that kind of need to be accessed regularly and there's not a great place to put things. And so, yeah, we have a tiny bedroom. This is probably the most undersized room in the house, the kitchen, the living room, everything else feels fairly normal, small house. But this room is really small and at first we didn't think we were going to be able to fit even a queen size bed and so we actually had taped it out and we we're like we just didn't think you'd you know have enough room for us to move around it and so we got a full bed quickly learned that even though we do love each other um, we need a little bit more space and so we swapped it out for a queen and then for side tables i want to build floating side tables and so i was trying to think of a, a style that i would like and i was over in washington visiting my friend brian he actually had a chunk of wood from california um, i believe a redwood and he had had it for a long time and he hadn't used it and so he gave it to me and i cleaned it up sanded it all down and then built two floating shelves they're kind of matching on either side from the same chunk of wood which i think is pretty cool and it's worked out well so we got our side tables, nice shiplap wall, and then our queen bed with underbed storage since we just don't have a lot. And then over here, we got our closet and this thing's not huge at all. We just have to have a curtain covering it. Um, and we've got one row for me, one row for Sadie. And Sadie is shockingly not sentimental. And so she 
was ruthless when we moved here because we came from a house that was about 1500 square feet and we had a walk-in closet and a lot more space to store things and so we had to downsize a lot and she got rid of a ton of stuff i was pretty impressed i didn't do as well um, and so my you know right now coming out of winter i still have a bunch of jackets and whatnot but this is all of our hanging storage and then we each get three drawers and that's it for clothes in this house so we've had to slim down a bit but uh, it's not bad it's worked out just fine now for the bathroom, the way it stands now, I moved the wall just slightly out. Otherwise the, the format or the layout is pretty much the same. I didn't want to have a swinging door because they take up a lot of space. And honestly, we're kind of living in this thing like a studio, so doors don't really get closed on the inside very much. And so I built this um, barn door, which I really like. It's, it's nice and smooth. And I used some cedar paneling on here too. And it's great. So if we do have you know guests over, it's pretty much the only time this door even gets closed. Otherwise, it's just kind of an open room. And so for the bathroom, because the shower is right over here and it's a pretty small shower, we just don't have a lot of space. We didn't even have enough room to put like a full size vanity in here with cabinets. And so, you know, storing the hygiene stuff is a little bit challenging right now. And, you know, Sadie has been able to make use of the shower. But other than that, it's, you know, it does the job. There's not a lot of extra space in here, but we've got a cool little mirror and some, some neat lights up there. And then one of our favorite things is at night, if we don't want to have all the bright lights on not only can we dim these lights right here but this light right here we turn the switch off and then back on within like two seconds it goes to this little ring light and so it's just this nice little glow and so it looks really dim right now but at night it's just perfect it doesn't you know blind you or in the morning when you wake up in the dark it's it's awesome so cool little thing these lights are from home depot these ones are from amazon and with all these things anything i mentioned i'll try to throw down in the the description down below if i miss anything let me know and i'll try to get it there i almost forgot this other barn door so our bedroom door is also a barn door and this one's a bit bigger i bought this used it was a bit beat up and so i took it all apart completely refinished it repainted it um, then hung it up in here well i actually hung it up three times because i did it wrong twice and so that was pretty fun and same with that one in there that one took me two tries so we got these barn doors this thing doesn't get closed much but when it does it's nice and it's you know, nice compact out of the way. We're kind of adding a little bit of a feature that looks cool in the living room. Okay, now moving on to the kitchen. This room got a complete redo. I mean, most of the house did, but this really got torn apart um, and redone. All of the walls got recovered. And this is how it sits now. We changed this into just the dining room here, pulled out the cabinets and whatnot that were there before. Uh, some of my favorite things in here, one, we got a chalkboard up here. And so as I've been scheming on um, the sound that we're building right now I kind of drew it up here as well as landscape I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do uh, So just kind of sketching things out and it's kind of fun to see that there So we'll see you know how that evolves and then over here. This is also another really cool piece And so this is also from Sadie's um, Grandma and uncle I believe it was this is wood from their farm over in Kansas that they um, made a frame out of and then her grandma crocheted this, our last name, and this was a wedding gift for us. So really cool to have that here. Um, another piece from Kansas, from their family that, yeah, gets to live on. And then we got this tiny little table, which at first I was worried it was not gonna be sufficient, but actually it's, it's been pretty good. And we find that, you know, this house isn't really sized for massive groups anyways. And so um, it works out really well for two people. And if we need four people, five people, you know, we can make it happen. Okay, now most people's favorite part is the kitchen in this. Got a complete do-over. Really what I wanted was to have a little bit more space in here. So there was upper cabinets prior all along here and it felt a little bit closed in and dark. And so I ripped all of the old cabinets out, the old flooring, wall covering, everything, um, put wall covering back up, kind of made my own shiplap look on the wall. And then we decided to do open shelving up here for things that don't look terrible to kind of give it more space. And I think it turned out really good. I really like the, it's also very convenient to just put things up and down, you know, straight from the, the, the sink. And then, yeah, other than that, we got the butcher block countertop and then I bought some um, tear out cabinets from somebody here locally that was replacing theirs with even nicer ones. And we painted those, put them in, and they turned out really good. And then right here, actually, this we found going through some stuff. This is my first, well, one of my first woodworking projects ever. I made it in high school in wood shop class. Yeah, I'm actually you know, impressed that it looks as good as it does because I knew very little back then. I still am learning. So 
We got that and then yeah, everything else. We got some used appliances. I had to buy a new refrigerator um, just because of the space constraints and, and the size was so specific. And then microwave had to go up on top, so it's not super convenient. But the things that matter are available. We got our sink you know, our, our stove and then coffee making supplies. And so, you know, I spend a lot of time right here using my AeroPress and pour over and whatnot. And we keep all of our supplements in there. And then over here, we've got our stacked washer dryer. These are pretty small, but they've, they worked sufficiently for us so far. Um, we didn't think we'd need a huge, you know, washer dryer, which we were right. Um, but we do find ourselves running loads pretty consistently, pretty much daily, especially right now when we're both training a lot and so we're sweating through clothes. But um, right here, we've got our pantry. So we didn't have a pantry in here before. I found this, this is actually a pre-built cabinet just from uh, Home Depot, I think it was. And I was really pumped to be able to fit this in here because now we've got all of our food storage in here. And that was gonna be a problem if we didn't have this. Then the rest of it is just more counter space. And then, you know, some storage up here. See, we got some cool little jars for spices and, or not for spices, but uh, for baking supplies. And yeah, so that is the kitchen. And overall, this interior has been awesome so far. Really the biggest challenges have been just with my stuff, my tools and whatnot, because the shed out back is just crammed with things. We've got bikes, skis, dirt bikes, my tools. And then when I have projects I want to work on, you know, for the house or whatever, there's just not much room. And so that's gonna be one of the next big ones. But then I also have to deal with all the landscaping on the outside, buttoning things up there, and then just odds and ends inside. But overall, it's been really fun because I like small spaces that are efficient. And this has really been efficient so far. Like we, we just, you know, there's not a lot of wasted space. And so you don't spend time, you know, walking up and down stairs or down long hallways or whatever it is. And for this phase of life right now, when we don't have any kids yet, it's perfect. So that's the tour for the inside and through this process I learned so much. I mean I started this with a little bit of knowledge on construction and how to use hand tools and whatnot but so much of this felt completely foreign to me and I will say that I learned an incredible amount and I don't regret it at all. There was definitely days that I you know questioned it but yeah it, it was awesome and simultaneously I actually also was trying to finish up my degree. And so I've been going to school for well too many years now, but um, online I was finishing up my bachelor's degree in business. And I kind of realized that through this process, when I got done, I just got my degree and I finished this thing. And I was thinking about the two and I was like, I think I actually probably learned more doing this than I did getting my degree, which unfortunately the degree costed a lot more and you know, the long-term ROI might not be there, but I guess that's another conversation. So anyways, um, if you're interested in doing something like this and you haven't, I definitely encourage it. People are really helpful. Like, you know, if you're able to find somebody that has a little bit of knowledge and you know, whatever problem it is, um, or even just a mentor for the whole process, you might not be able to get people to actually, you know, swing hammers and do the work, but you know, at least offer advice and, and help solve problems for you. It can be super helpful. And I definitely owe it to a number of people in this project. Um, from you know redoing the roof to the plumbing, electrical, you know all those little things. I, I got a ton of advice um, and, and some help, and, and it was really, yeah, really beneficial. But anyways, all that to say, I didn't start with any special skills, and honestly, YouTube and other resources have everything you can possibly need. And so, if you're curious about any other component of this, um, be it the financial side, like how I got this house, it wasn't on the market, or you know the financial side, I tracked everything to try to you know. Yeah, see how much this whole process would cost as well as what i learned about the tools and the different options for doing things definitely let me don't know down in the comments i'd like to make more videos on this type of stuff i really enjoy the diy side and learning you know how to solve these problems creatively and then sharing them with you guys and so give me your input down there and if there's anything i forgot to link up just let me know and i'll try to get it for you so hope you enjoyed watching and i'll catch you in the next one